So you work in product analytics. Is that about figuring out how your product's used? Uh, kind of. I, I think there are, there are two sides to uh, analytics uh, at LinkedIn. Uh, one side is, is probably the, the more traditional uh, analytics where you're looking at how your product is used and using that to drive strategy and to adapt to existing products. Um, the other side, which is where I live, is um, product analytics in the sense of using that data to build new products and new features on the site. So you're kind of taking the, the, um, the, the exhaust, right, the, the signals, the, the byproducts of your product to actually fold that back in and make more products? That, that's right. Um, so as an example, uh, things like people you may know, uh, people who viewed this profile also viewed this profile, recommendations, all of those things are considered products and are accountable for revenue. So if you want to add a new feature like those or a new uh, product offering on, the, on a site, um, that actually has to drive um, revenue or help the user in some way. Uh, right, so it's connected to product. Because you know, I, I can see where it comes from, that there's a lot of interesting data and you could tinker and you could find things out. But it seems to me you need a bit more of a process to actually get that back into a product. That's right. Um, so the, the way I describe it is, uh, if, wh where do these products come from, right? So uh, typically what happens is you're usually working on something else uh, or you, you're at the point where you're familiar with what data is available mm -hmm. um, and you have some ideas. Uh, those ideas uh, then are usually built out into some kind of prototype. Um, and if it has legs, and you get buy-in, then it gets resourced and turned into a real product. So people that do your job, you know, we've used this term data scientist for them. It seems to me it's a, kind of a new skill set. What kind of skills do you, do you actually have to have to do what you do? Uh, that's a good question. So um, what, I think what I'm seeing uh, out in the field is that there are kind of three main areas that people need to excel in to do well at this. Uh, one is the more traditional uh, statistics and algorithms, machine learning, mathematics. You need to have a solid grounding uh, in those principles to actually extract signals from this data and build things with it. Um, the other side, uh, or one of the other sides, is to actually uh, be able to work with large amounts of data. And that involves often using open source tools like Hadoop, um, Java, Python. Uh, le leveraging those tools and in, in, in new technologies that, and actually being able to code um, is, a, is a big deal. Uh, the, the, the third side, I'd say, is uh, the ability to make those things real and, and make them usable to users. And that might mean data visualization, it might mean building web prototypes, using external APIs, integrating with other services, those kinds of things. I see. So you guys kind of have to be like explorers and builders and communicators as well. Right. So, you know, LinkedIn's pretty forward looking. We know, you know, you've been working on this stuff for a while. Do you see the rise of data scientists in other companies too? Yeah, uh, we're seeing that a lot. Um, so we get to look at a lot of this data about, you know, what jobs people are posting, um, who's joining, what companies, what the roles are. And uh, that's something we're seeing a lot, a lot of, and, and, and actually personally, people just will ping you and say, you know, we're looking for people wh who are doing that type of role and, you know, where can we find them? Uh, new startups are increasingly, I think, adding that person to the initial founding stack. They're getting a, a data scientist or a data engineer. So that's, that's a good sign. Great. Well, it seems a particularly good time to be in your job. Thanks very much. Thanks.